Ahoy Rovers! Well, we're getting to a pretty exciting portion of the build right now. We have the shear stringer attached. You know, you saw that in a previous video and the stem. Those were interesting, but now we're getting to the point where we're going to be putting some plywood on the sides of the hull. So things are going to start happening rapidly. Now there are two ways you can do this. You can take plywood and you can just butt it together and then overlap it with a, uh, say, one foot wide strip of plywood, which is called a butt block. And that's perfectly fine. But a more elegant way of doing it is by scarfing the plywood together, creating basically a great big long panel of continuous plywood. And that's the way we'll be doing it here on Wave Rover. Now it sounds like it might be a bit complicated, but I tell you, it is well within your wheelhouse. All you need to do is to take your time, prepare well, and build yourself a scarfing jig and I'll be showing you mine as we progress through this. Anyway, a lot to do. It's going to be a lot of fun. Time to crack on. So what are plywood scarfs and where do they come from? Well, I'm going to cover that and a whole lot more. So let's get underway. Now, before you can make one of these fancy scarf joints on these big sheets of plywood, you're going to need a scarfing jig. And there'll be more about that in a few minutes. Hello Rovers, I interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special bulletin. It's concerning the scarfing jig, or should I say scarfing jigs, because there are two. There's the one that we see here for scarfing the plywood. There's also the jig for scarfing the stringer, or lumber, if you will. Uh, both of those jigs I've put together in an instructional video on how to build your own, and also a set of plans. Now this is a fundraiser for Wave Rover to offset the cost of building materials. If you're interested, there is a link in the video description that will take you to my Etsy shop where these are available. Anyway, back to our regular broadcasting program now. So at this point, you've finished cutting your scarf. Now I like to sweep off the area, but instead of putting all that sawdust in the bin, you can just leave it on the floor. I sweep it under the strong back of the 650 at this point so that any glue, any epoxy that drips down from any of the joints that we'll be making in the next little while won't land on the concrete. They'll land on sawdust and it makes cleanup a whole lot easier. All right, so then just undo the clamp, and uh, which is really not just a clamp, but a guide for my jig. And then just pull the sheet back. That joint is pretty much ready to go. If it looks like it has a few rough spots, you can hit it with either a block of sandpaper, so a block with a piece of sandpaper wrapped around it, or you can take the belt sander carefully to it using the slope that we've just cut into it as your guide. Well, this scarf looks pretty good, I think. So cut the rest of your scarfs using the very same method. Then it's a matter of setting up a gluing table. And I'm going to show you a really easy way of doing that so we can glue up three sheets. So to make a gluing table, which is really only a gluing surface, I'm going to repurpose my old lofting table, which actually wasn't a lofting table, it was more a lofting surface. And anyway, let's crack on with that. All right, so I'm here on my old lofting board and I'm going to be cutting this in half to make some supports. And I'm just going to show you a little skill 
how to cut a panel uh, with a really straight line so it's very usable. Uh, first thing you want to do is set your saw. So I know that my saw table here is five inches. I just from the blade to the outside is five inches. So what I need to do is find the center of my panel, which is right about here, and then measure from there five inches over. And I've done that, and I have a couple of little marks set up. So now I just want to clamp this down right on top of my marks. So the next thing you want to do, put your hearing protection on and uh, make the cut. But before we can do that, we need to get little supports under just to catch the wood. And that's pretty good. Now I can put my weight on this side without the wood collapsing on itself. And if it collapses on itself, it'll bind on the saw. And if that happens, the saw will jump. Also at this point, bear in mind that you have a two by four, which is an inch and a half. You have half inch OSB, so that's two inches total. So make sure you set your saw appropriately. So I have my saw set to one inch, which is half an inch below this, but a full inch above the concrete floor. And there you go, you have a nice straight cut. You can count on that being nice and square to the edge if you measured correctly. So now we're off to the races. We can start making our scarfing platforms. Okay, Rovers, so now what I've done is I've turned over that piece of OSB. I have a two by four running right down the center and I'm just going to put a few screws into that and secure it down. Right, so now we have something that we can glue on top. It's, it's, uh, I do need to put some supports on the side. I do have long two by fours right now and you could use that if you, if you want, but I'm trying to um, uh, not use too much good lumber for this. So there's plenty of scrap laying around. I only need to put little pieces in each corner and then we have a surface that we can scarf on. We need to make two of these. So now my gluing platforms are complete and I've covered them in a layer of poly and I've also centered the scarf joint on the center of the platform and by that I mean the center that has the 2x4 running straight down the center. So that gives us support right where we need it at the scarf joint. Now I've also marked the center on that 2x4 and I've marked the center on the scarf itself and those have to line up. Now you need two of these, so I built one for each joint. And this is the second joint right here. Now I'm also using spring clamps either side of the scarf joint itself. That way when you apply pressure on the scarf joint to glue it, the sheets won't slide on that glue joint. And the center again is marked on the 2x4 and the scarf itself. So you do all this prior to mixing up any of your glue. Then the last thing you need to do is just provide some general support at the end of the, the first sheet and the last sheet that you're gluing. You don't need any poly on this because there's not going to be any glue anywhere near this. All right. Let's get that glue mixed up. Well, Mrs. Rover is here to give me a hand during this glue up. We've done a heap of glue ups over the years, and she's a bit of an expert when it comes to this. Thank you, Mrs. Rover. Well, these lead ingots weigh anywhere between 20 to 40 pounds each, 
and there's applying a lot of pressure over the glue joint. Now I do have a 1x4 that's coated in packing tape so it doesn't stick to the glue joint underneath the lead ingots so that the pressure is applied equally right across the entire joint. While gluing up those scarf joints, I also took the opportunity to glue the shear into the stem. Then after a little cleanup, that's what it looks like. Also take note of the wedges I put on the side of the strong back so that I could get extra pressure or correct angle with the clamp. So it's the next day and now I can start taking the pressure off that joint and taking a look at it. Well, Rovers, that was the very first time I have ever scarfed plywood together. I've scarfed plenty of solid lumber together in the past. And when I made my previous plywood boat, which was a James Warham 26 foot catamaran, and it was made out of quarter inch plywood, the hull sides that is, uh, those were put together with the butt block that I had mentioned earlier. It's a fine method, but this method is superior but there are a few more steps to take to do it. I'm pretty happy with the result. I'm now going to uh, pick this up and turn it over and see what the underside looks like. Anyway, time to crack on with that. So Brian is on vacation, so his father came in to give me a hand. Now it's an honor to add three new names to the Benefactor's Bulkhead. John Ashfield, Randall Lynch, and Glenn Wither. Now these folks have made a donation of $100 US or more, and their names will be written on a bulkhead inside Wave Rover and will travel with me on her circumnavigation. These funds are much appreciated. Thank you. I'd also like to welcome on board a new patron, S. Foley. Now this pledge of support, along with our existing patrons, 
contributes to the creation of these videos in so many ways. Thank you. Well, Rovers, uh, that was really interesting for me because, as I've said now a few times, I've never scarfed plywood before, and it can be a little intimidating. You know, you can have a bit of anxiety about the whole thing because it really is such an important part of the hull and you don't want to make a mistake. But I can honestly say, uh, by using the jig and just being prepared and just, you know, being methodical in the whole process, uh, you're going to be just fine doing this. Now, uh, I did learn a few things, you know, as I started using the jig, I, uh, I got better at using it and I realized some of the things that I could improve. I've included those lessons learned, if you will, in the instructional video that's uh, linked in the video description. Now, next week, next week, we should be doing something even more interesting. We should be cutting these great big long blanks into the actual plating sizes and then putting them into position or at least starting to get the lowers into position. I think uh, that's going to be just a marvelous step forward and things will start moving pretty rapidly after that. Anyway, folks, until next time, thanks for watching.